Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my vlog. Um, so a little, so a little, little bit different, and I'm gonna do a couple of few videos um, regarding these types of things. And this is uh, this is a Unidam UBC 125 XLT um, scanner, and it's. Quite an old model, as far as I know. This thing was out um, 2013, or I can't remember the, the date completely. But uh, it covers civil air traffic um, control, major uh, military air aircraft ban, marine radio, citizen ban, 10 meter amateur radio, PMR 446, professional mobile radio, personal mobile radio, sports communications, events communications, church. Mosque radio and more. Uh, it's 500 um, channel programmable. I'm not going to go over all of uh, what it can do on here. I'm going to show you a um, couple of bits of software to help you get started with one of these if you if you were to buy one, and it's specifically for this uh, UBC 125, the XLT and the other variants of the 125. 500 uh, user program or channels covers 25 to 88, 108 to 174, which is it's within that area. I want I want like a 118 or 119 to 137, the air band, which is what I'm uh, more interested in, and 225 to 512 and 806 to 960 megahertz. Um, with alpha tagging and it's got a whole bunch of stuff here but this isn't um what i'm what i want to talk to you about first of all i'm going to tell you now i started off one of these um rtl-sdr.com uh, this is version three and it's a an sdr uh, receiver and what i would do is i would use this uh, just in the background here, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I would use this and I would use it in Linux because I've had issues trying to get the uh, Sharp, the uh, SDR Sharp to work. Well, never mind, I'll get it to work eventually. And uh, so I just um, put a virtual box in and I use Linux Mint. And in that I use a piece of software and that allows me to use this. Now what I was doing was I was using that I'm going to show you in a second, so this doesn't take long to get going at all. Let me just go for the devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want a USB device, real tech. There we go. Device scan, and it'll pop up here in a second. Key says, device scan, there we go. It's there. And we should now be able to... Let's just go to something sensible. And you'll see here, we should be able to get the air, the air bands. Now this might have a bit of a pop when it kicks in. Um, because it's just, it's just like that for me, unfortunately. Let me just make sure we've got... Um, Modern day etiquette. There we Kids go. In. That's a bit of Alan Partridge. I think that bloke's really, really funny. So, as you can see, look, we get to see here. Move that up, boy. I think this is just the. Uh, Right, so, and this this is what I was doing. In order to get my frequencies in the scanner, this is what I was doing. I was just sat patiently. I'd wait until I got a frequency there, and then I'd just put that in the scanner. Um, I made my life a little bit easier. Let me just um, put a pause on this for a second. I made my life a little bit easier when I found a piece of software and that piece of software is the Scan 125. And I don't think it's going to be happy with me just at this minute in time because it's not plugged in. So let me just 
Disconnect that. And plug in the, uh, the scanner to the computer. And it's simple enough. Plug that in there. Plug that where I had the SDR connected. Uh, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to exit out of that again. Just go in. Okay, right. So now it's reading the scanner. It's showing me what the voltage is and it will be on charge. Now inside this bit of software, let me just get rid of that. Uh, may as well just get rid of that out of the way. Inside this bit of software, this is where we get to see what's going on. So if I click scan there, we get to see that this thing's scanning. It's scanning between these banks here that I've got highlighted. Now the thing that I like about this bit of software is one, it's absolutely free. At this moment in time, it's absolutely free. You get to see, you know, when you you grab hold of this and you've got these functions and all this now you go through and eventually you're going to learn this stuff but to start off with to getting your stuff in here uh, you might find it to be a little bit let me take that off a minute because I'm going to connect this I've got an antenna um, it's a multi thing antenna it's one of these uh, what they call it, like it's like a Visconti type thing. Um, yeah, I'll put the image up on the screen. And here's one, an image from the shop. So you get to see a bit clearer because I just took the other one on the bench. Yeah, so it's one of those um, Moonraker, Skyraker, whatever. And it's just sat in the loft space above my head. But this is constantly on the go. If I just turn the volume up a little bit. You know, it's, it's it's pretty much constantly on the go as it's uh, as it's scanning through there. I'm just going to turn it down just to get in the background just a little bit. And back at the screen, we can see look, we got a we can do searches on the banks. I'm not going to go through all the settings here. This is the beauty about it. You go through the settings on the scanner here, and it's oh, how did I do that? How did I do that? Well, here you can see a lot of things just here, and it's what you want to. Well, what what I find that just to get myself going, there's little bits that I couldn't find how to do on this, like get it so the light comes on when you press a key, and when something breaks through the squelch. But on the screen here, you can do that. You can set your backlight, so it's just the key press. It's always on, which is what you can do on the radio. Is always on. Uh, just for the squelch when when uh, anything comes through or always off. Well, I like mine to be on key press, key and squelch. You adjust the contract, you can adjust the squelch, you can turn the squelch on and off from the preset place where you have it. Uh, you can adjust your volume here. Plan 1, Plan B doesn't seem to be a lot of choice. It just, mine just sits on Plan 1, which I believe that's what's here for this. Now, one of the Great thing as well, this is this editor. Now, all of this in bank one, or with the majority of it, see all this, uh, you know, that was one of mine as well, is I've gone through, and this is where the second bit of software is going to come in now. I'm going to tell you about I'm just going to cover you in the first bit here. I didn't actually want that on, did I? What I wanted was this arc so you can buy arc uh, this is 27.59 and this is something very similar to what this does yep you get to go in there change things around and do i don't know if you get to do as much as this because i've not really spent a lot of time in arc i, I couldn't um, i didn't see the point because you can download the demo version which you can use for a month but then it's 27.59 and if you want to import because it talks about here um, you can import um, your channels from here which is the radio reference UK you've got this for the US as well the radio reference 
which is all well and good. Now, let me just go back very slightly to what I was doing here. Was, what I was doing here then was once I got all these frequencies in, uh, for these ones I was doing myself using the SDR um, in, you know, Mint, or I was actually doing it from my laptop. I would then use this number and I would type the number into here and it would let me know what it was. So if I just show you now, so 128051200. So if I just say, yeah, I'll look, 127. I'm just going to put this in because you can see that I've already done those. And I'll do as a search and it then tells me what it is. That's like the nationwide number. Of course, if there's one closer, which is probably what it is, but I'd still just put uh, London Control 278 Dabbertree North while I'd abbreviate some of this like LON and um, CTRL. S28 DAV, you know, it, it's just because it, it'll only fit in, you can only get so much uh, to fit in these spaces. Um, and so that was the way then I started putting the names to this. Then I come across, well, there's these, there's these other websites that you can use, and you can look through these, and you can copy these in, and you can copy and paste them into these boxes, just put your frequency in, put whatever it is in there. Uh, once you've added it, you don't need to press save or anything, it just adds for itself. Uh, and you just carry on, you know, with the scan. You just press in through on the scan. Uh, normally when you add something to it, actually does stop the scanning. But then, oh and there's this one as well. This is uh, ukafg.co.uk, probably got something very similar in America. Uh, where you get to see all these different, um, you can get rid of the, the, this isn't very easy to see, um, but you can see that sort of says apply there, just about, and there's a whole bunch of frequencies in there, and so I found that that to be quite good, but I didn't actually use them, what I ended up doing, this is the Ofcom uh, thing, what I ended up doing was, this is where you get scan 125 from which is what i'm using yeah this is uh, nick bailey nick dash bailey .co uk forward slash scan 125 forward slash and you're good to go there https as well i do like the idea it's a uh secure site that's where you, you download the, the the software free of charge then i also found um this is what I use is program 125. Now, if I just drop out of this, because you can't have them both running at the same time, and click out of this, what I uh, would use here is this uh, select a port, and I'm going to use, I presume I'm there, yep, connect and start. And you can go into Backup Scanner, Restore Backup, Open Programmer. Now, the great thing about this is you can see here, now if I just open a file that I've already made on here, which is, this is uh, RR Radio Reference UK, open that up and bam, look. It puts all those, uh, this is what I first had written in there, in, in the other one, Scan 125, as you can see, and what I can actually see on the scanner itself, is that it's actually, um, I've put the names in. I just haven't updated that um, and got it to go in here. But this is where you then get to add this old bunch of CB stuff that can come out. But this is where I've been adding these channels. Like if I click on airports here, then you can see all down here, like you've got all these different airports. Um, and you've got to scroll down here. This is in the UK. Uh, you'd have different ones for in America, of course, when you'd be using the uh, radio reference US, I would presume that would be. So then, yeah, so then you've got the, uh, yeah, look, you've got the, well, there's only a couple that have been added there from Pembry. 
it adds it on the end. I, of course, if you don't have 500 channels, and I've used most of my slots up on this, so there's a whole bunch of uh, private radio stuff there. Uh, there's all sorts there. And what you can do once you've got this in here, is let's say we do want a Pembry. So if I just um, I do this, can't we? If I just do this for Pembry, then I can go cut and move up to somewhere where I've got a slot. I know up at uh, two somewhere I had a slot, didn't I? There, it's, there we go. And I can just go in here, put paste and penry there. And that's how you can move your stuff around in here. You can cut and paste and drop these where you want to drop them, where you don't want to drop them. We get rid of those two rows there. Um, delete the rows and we're going to delete them. I could have done them um, both together, but we did it one at a time. And then once you're happy with how you've got this set up, whether it be your air control, uh, you know, whatever it is, you're going to be putting it in there. That's just added that there again. It just sticks it on to the end. Um, but of course, you'd uh, let me just do that so I can delete those rows because they're already in mine anyway. Uh, and and that's how you, and like I say that's how you can add from there. Now in order to do this with this low, this is a fifteen pound per year subscription. Let me just get rid of that. Do I want to quit? Yeah, I don't want to save anything. So in here, like I say, it's fifteen pound a year for you to get access to all that. It's easy for me now because I've got the software, but you can't get the software unless you look. If you click here, look, you've got to subscribe, and it's fifteen pound. So. When you think about it, you know, not slate and arc or anything, but that's twenty seven fifty nine. Then if you want to use the uh, information from here, um, from radio reference, you've got to pay that subscription as well. So that turns into nearly 45 quid. Me, you know, I've got to do everything on a budget. So I, I'm using the Scan 125, because I, I find that to be uh, easier. It's even simpler when it first kicks in, look at me. It reads itself, finds it, and loads it up. Um, and like the other one, where you've got to go through that little process, but that's by the by. Uh, and you get to see it laid out like this. So you get to like set up your close call, or if you want to do a priority close call on whatever bands you're going to have priority on, and and do. Um, and you can really get to play around with this and find the benefits of what's actually inside your scanner. Now, like I say. I'm using that little antenna up there, and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly pull this off here again, click it over to there, and I can disconnect that, it doesn't matter. And we've still got Mint running, I don't know if the devices will still be there, there we go, just get that device going, and let's just see if we can... Wasn't sure if it was going to let me do that, and uh, <laughs> but interested if it was or wasn't. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so we can get it going from there. And so if I, you know, you, you get to see here what this is like. And of course, this is like the waterfall screen. You can make this a little bit bigger. That's as big as I can get it, unfortunately. It sits within uh, its own little window view here. I use OpenBots because it's uh, VirtualBox, it's open source software. I would normally have used the other one, but I can't remember what it is that I used to use all the time. Because um, it lets you do a full screen, and that just means I can have a computer inside a computer with a full screen, which I do actually prefer. Uh, so, look, we just saw some here. And this, you know, once you've uh, once you got it here, you can zoom this in. It's a, it's a great bit of software, really. It's quite a weak signal. Um, but what I'm going to be doing, because I've got another antenna coming, which is more dedicated. Because the thing about the antenna that I'm using, it's like a jack of all trades. 
He goes from 25 to two, uh, two make, uh, 2,000 megahertz, 2 gigahertz. And so it's not really going to be as good as, you know, maybe what, uh, what you really want. Let me just... Why can't I... Uh, we uh, I don't seem to have any sound. Why have I lost sound? Uh, I, turn, oh, I turn it down here. For some reason, unknown reason, I turn the sound down. Just technical hitch. And we go. Let's just squelch out the noise. Put it on automatic squelch. Oh, that's a nice strong signal. But of course, you've got to catch it. And that's the problem. I mean, it's great because you get to see activity. But you're going to be able to catch that activity as well while it's doing things. And I've got this other... Um, antenna come in. This other antenna is what they call a uh, Slim Dash G. So it's like a ribbon antenna with a coil bobbing at the bottom. But I'll show you it when I get it. But I just thought I'd show you this. So like, yeah, like I say, this is how I got into it by playing around with this, uh, which I thought was all pretty cool. But you, you see, there's quite a lot of activity. I'm really in this one little one little area. And we're going to be going from around right about here, see where it says airband, and then we get onto the airband, which is what we're interested in. Uh, so if I would just go like that, this was about 118 in it. Uh, so this is what we're interested in, all the way up to uh, 36, 37 on this, which is quite a lot when you get going. I mean, when you just leave it, you can see it like it's him jumping up down all over the place. Um, and this jumps near enough the entire uh, band across uh, the. Um... No, 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 no. Yeah, so you get to see quite a lot of activity anyway. But of course, the nice thing about having the scanner itself is it's constantly running through, and when it finds a signal. It's, um, this is, uh, you know, it's uh, just a, a longer, I didn't bother really so much with the rubber duck thing that comes with it, just because, uh, you know, they're not really known to be that, that brilliant. And is this is actually scanning at the moment. So this is still gas stuff with this antenna. In actual fact, it gets quite a lot. It's, um, it's great. I absolutely love it. Um, no, but when you want to see it, and you want to see what's happening quite a bit across there. This is quite good as well. It's a pity you can't get more on here. You know, like I couldn't have from 119 all the way up to 137 all across this one little area here. It would probably quite have quite a lot of activity on there, to be honest with you. Oh, as you can see, just going through it, you see all these. These are all transmissions. It's so all transmissions. It's uh, yeah. So you know, this is what I've been doing. This is what I've been playing around with. I got a. I got a um a board coming. Uh, well, it's from AliExpress. It's um, it's for it's got an airband on it, like a radio receiver. And it's a kit, so we're going to build it up and see what it's like, and we can test on two aerials because I'll leave the other antenna. Oh, I'll leave the other antenna up there, and uh, just see what the differences are. I mean, I can see here. Look, there's a hundred. There's eighty. So we've got like minus ninety for the noise floor, and uh, uh, everything else comes above it, which is pretty good. At least I think it is anyway. Especially when it's just like one of these little shoot oh that's naked, we've gone right out there. We go to the end. Let's see what that is. It's disappeared now. But that was a uh, transmission. But and you can just zoom into it. Pull it across. Oh so because you can see down here when it was transmitting. It's quite easy then to put your marker across there and yeah, I'm gonna say, wow, that's a nice strong one. Pull on across. Just pull up there. 
Yeah, there's the Foxtrot or Rolex and the 430. Thank you very much. Yeah, there you go. So there's uh, just switching over a little bit or uh, just getting a bit more involved with, like I said, I've had this for a good while. But now I've got this, it's made a lot more interesting for me with this antenna plugged in. It's a constant the on the go, so I just and leave it up on the shelf and, and enjoy what's going on there. And... Uh, yeah, with the new antenna low, because the, 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 like I said, the one that's up in the loft space there, it's like a multi, multi band. But the antenna that's coming is specifically made for the air band. So fingers crossed. And it's got a 3 dB gain, uh, I believe, to a dipole. So fingers crossed, we're going to be able to hear a lot more. I can hear two way conversations with this. I mean, I can hear the, with this plugged into this, and it up in the attic, I couldn't, when it was downstairs, the antenna, um, I couldn't hear two-way conversations. I can't hear all of them, but I can hear enough uh, to know that there's been a big improvement with me taking the antenna off the desk in here and putting it up in the attic. And then when I get the one that's specifically tuned to the band that I want, uh, I expect it to perform better. So I'll, I'll let you know about that as well. And I'll show you the board, of course, the kit when it comes in. And we'll, uh, yeah, hopefully have some interesting fun playing around, having a little listen to what's going on out there. I'm not going to go over the other bands now uh, and have a look on those, like 70 centimetre. I see that's quite active, only by looking at the amount of frequencies that are there to put in the scanners. There's a lot more there on 70 centimetre than what there is on the other ones, 4 metres and all that. Um, so... And I don't really get a lot here, but I need a specific antenna, I believe, and stick it outside for CB. Uh, but that's a much bigger antenna um, for that sort of thing, so it will be going up. But I'll do different videos on that and just see what we get. And So it's what. Anyway, so if you got this far, I hope you found some of this sort of interesting. It's a look into a different world uh, for me in a way. I was always interested in this sort of thing a long, long time ago. I had a CB when I was a teenager and my handle was Hi-Fi and um, I used to love playing around with the whole, the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, brilliant stuff. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.